My name is Brennan Jorgensen, a.k.a. Jorgie, and you're watching Fade the Mahoney, Diamondbacks, Mallards, pregame. We're going to talk about some stuff, what we think. And go ahead, drop down, give these guys a follow, subscribe, give them a like. They're doing good things over here. So let's get into the show. Preview a little bit, like what? What is uh, the thought process going into the series against the Mallards? How do you attack Jordan Robles? What's the game plan? Yeah, well, the quote my teammate Jonah Heath, nobody said it was going to be easy. <laughs> so, uh... Hey, welcome back to Fade the Mahoney. Uh, we're going to preview uh, Mallards, Diamondbacks, National League Championship Series. <clears throat> Trevor and I are going to do our gambling. I'm Mike, that's Trevor. Uh, we're going to do our gambling here uh, fairly quickly, and then a little bit later, similar to last week, when uh, Chris Cheatham stopped by later and diminished Sean Flynn's batting ability, uh, we're gonna have I'm gonna have um, Jason Chadwick uh, come on and help uh, from an insider's point of view, help preview it. So, Trevor, how's it going, man? Excellent. How you been? Good. Uh, hey, thank you to the Cobras, huh? Coming on the show, you guys, those of you who watched this, seem to like that one. We had a lot of interaction, lots of views, so. Thank you to the Red Baron. Thank you to Sean Flynn. And thank you to uh, Drew Davis for making the time. That was a pretty good show. But onward and upward to the National League Championship Series. Mallards, Diamondbacks. Trevor, let's do it. What do you got? All right. So this is a rematch, obviously, from a regular season matchup between the Mallards and Diamondbacks. In slate two, when the Mallards really took it to them, won all three games with the sweep. Um, Slightly different roster constructions at this point, I guess, because in that series, the Mallards did not have Caden Irwin. Uh, Davenport, you know, played in that series, but isn't the same. He's a better player now, I think, than he was then. B- bigger contributor, probably. Um, and Tommy was pitching in that series as well. Obviously, it's the playoffs. Uh, so, I don't know. For me, I-, I think the Mallards have to be favorites here just when you have Jordan Robles on your team. You know, we saw what Jimmy can do, you know, we know that Jimmy can carry a team also. Um, So I don't think that this should be too big of a spread. Uh, I do like the Mallards at minus 140. Okay. 140. That's the same that you had the other team last week. Predators. 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 (laughs) It's been a long day already. Um, All right. So Mallards minus 140. Um. Well, in our pre, pre-playoff pre draft, uh, I did take – you took the Mallards with your first pick. I took the Cobras first overall. You took the Mallards w- with your first pick. Those are double – those are bonus picks. Those are worth $200 a piece if they win. I do have the Diamondbacks. I'm going to stick with the Diamondbacks. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to ride with uh, Jimmy Norp to uh, put the team on his back and – carry him carry the team it's understandable i mean you know this is going to be a great series i mean you have two of the marquee players in mlw matching up with a chance to go to sofi on the line you know you have robles and And it's like when you think about it man how is robles gonna lose two games and then you think well how is nor gonna lose two games and it's got (laughs) that's why the line i think is is pretty close i you know obviously i think the mallards are have a slight advantage and that's where it can come down to these other pieces. And that's how, how it happens so often in MLW. You saw Sean Flynn come up really big last week for the Cobras. So who, you know, who of these other guys is going to step up? Um, Tommy really had a great series against the Diamondbacks. He was really seeing, seeing Norp very well. Um, he, uh, or maybe his home runs were off of Neath, uh, Heath. I can't remember. Let me think. Yeah, I guess two of his home runs were off of, of, um, off of Heath. Actually, now thinking back, back to this series, uh, Jimmy only really pitched the first game in the series. This was the series where we thought he was not looking like himself. We had looked injured. Uh, Trey and Jonah both pitched. And, you know, we heard Jimmy actually say that if the second arm out of the bullpen for him, it's going to be Casey Bennett. I think also my second pitcher in this series, say things go wrong, I would, I would go Casey Bennett. Uh, Very interesting comment to make. Uh, and Interesting to see whether that even comes into play. You know, in my mind, this is Jordan versus Jimmy all the way. Yeah, I was going to do, uh, we used to do over under runs in the series. We don't do it in the playoffs because again, we don't know how many games are going to be played, but I thought uh, 
a um, bonus over under line that I could set is uh, pitchers in the series. I'd set it at uh, two and a half with the under being minus 450. <laughs> yeah. Something like yeah. That. I mean, I, I would think that these guys are just going to have the ball and you go from there. I mean, you know, you did see these are really kind of interesting. If either of these teams gets into, obviously, one of these two teams is going to go to SoFi. And seeing what that, that team does with their pitching at SoFi will be interesting from either perspective because you kind of have with the Mallard, you have Jordan, obviously, and then you have uh, Caden and Davenport who have both shown some pretty good flashes. Uh, and then on the other side, obviously, you have Heath, who is like a proven, you know, playoff pitcher and a lefty that a lot of people, you know, ha- might have trouble seeing. And then you got Casey Bennett, who's just this kind of complete unknown, right. really right. pitched one game. You have Trey Flood, obviously, also. Um, so it's really interesting when we get to, into talking about the SoFi, you know, the World Series game games, what that pitching match is going to be like for the for the NL team. Uh, yeah, this should be an excellent series. I'm obviously along with everybody else looking forward to it. Um, all right, so I've got the D backs. I'm riding with Jimmy Norp. Uh, are we gonna let me go first in the ladder draft this this time around? Since sure. One, one other there. thing, though, real quick is that. This series is probably going to come down to Michael Shima. Oh, yeah. Big Shima fan around here. How does Michael Shima perform? You know, he's, you know, obviously you know what you're going to get from Jimmy, right? You know he's going to hit the ball. You know he's going to pitch well. What Shima does seems to carry a lot of weight for this team, both in the field and if he can come up with a few clutch hits, he could be the X factor. Well, that and... Heath has the ability to hit multiple home runs. He's, he seems to me to be an all or nothing hitter, at least the last few series. So that'll be interesting. But uh, <clears throat> Shima, as we said on their last uh, recap, when they beat the Eagles, Shima was nothing less than great. He did everything they needed him to do uh, in, in the batter's box and in the field. He was fantastic. So um, and then what can Tommy and Caden do on the other side? You know, obviously if, if Tommy's producing behind Jordan, that makes, or either of them, just, you really only need one of those two guys to perform really well, not even really well, just get on base. If you give Jordan two at bats an inning, it's going to be hard to beat the Mallards. Yeah, that's, I think that's really true. Uh, these are two three-man lineups for sure, right? Just, I, I can't imagine them doing anything but three-man lineups. All right. <clears throat> all right we're agreement there okay i get to uh pick for the ladder right yes yeah okay i'll take uh robles interesting a little hedge a little hedge there well i can i am supremely confident he's going to pitch every pitch i can't say the same for jimmy even though i think they both will but i yeah so yes kind of a hedge okay well i'll obviously take mr nork all right <clears throat> you do him dirty like that <laughs> um uh if i had one wish my one wish is that it goes three games yeah it would have been so disappointing had flynn dropped that ball not only costing them the win but costing us the third game so let's just let's play three everybody um it feels like it's uh, it feels like it will what what were your thoughts real quick i'm sorry no we don't want to go long here but what what are your thoughts on you actually i know you didn't listen to pipe it up but they were talking about how uh, Drew was talking a little bit about how the game two winner actually like game two is far more important than game one, because that momentum going into game three is really hard to come back from once you lose game two. And you kind of saw it with both the Eagles Diamondback series and the Preds Cobra series that that game two winner, there was huge emotional swings there. And that was hard to come back from. Um. I guess that's interesting. The fact that Drew said it means it's probably wrong. Um, but <clears throat> I don't know. I think if you go to game three, you got a new ball, right? So I think the advantage should be to whoever the better pitcher is. And in this series, I don't know who that is. So that's true. That's true. Uh, but that's interesting. Um, should we do just a little bit of gambling? Our NFL? Yeah, let's do a little bit of gambling. I'm, I'm a big gambler. I'm a big gamble fan. Uh, just to recap, everybody, uh, we have done eight weeks now. Uh, Trevor, you've lost three in a row. You are now three and five in the season. I've lost four in a row. I'm two and six on the season. And the E-Donk has won 
three in a row. He's four, three and one on the season. Uh, and hopefully I get another pick from Georgie sent my way. Somehow that guy with his continually awful picks is up to five and one. No, feels like he's no longer allowed to be on this show. He's got to start his own show where he, where people actually follow what he does. Unreal. I think Cheatham actually won his last week too. Yeah. He had the Packers and, uh, they were down by a million and the, uh, uh, Bills stopped trying to score. So he backdoored it. All right. What do you got, Trevor? All right. So if you guys have been following along, my strategy all year long has been to go with the home dome dogs in my favorite play. It hasn't worked out. I feel like I've gotten very unlucky. I think the best way to go about this as any gambler would do would be to go the opposite of what you've been doing all year. The lions are once again, home dome dogs, right? Is that correct? Am I reading this right? right? It's up to four. That was three yesterday. Up to four against yeah. Packers. Yeah, so they're home dome dogs once again. Traditionally, that's the, the side I would take. I'm going to go the exact opposite okay. and just take the Packers minus four. All right, so you're going to fade yourself. Fading myself. Fading. My, I'm, I'm fading myself, fading myself. Gotcha. It's perfectly clear. All right, uh, that's going to do our little section here. Uh, say hi to Jason Chadwick right about now. What's up, Jason? Hope you're doing well. Enjoy the off season. <laughs> Long off season for Chadwick. All right. Thanks, Trevor. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, welcome back. Uh, playing the role of Jason Chadwick today is uh, Brendan Jorgensen, a.k.a. Jorgie. Buy his jersey, everybody. Um, oh, look at that. You've got one, too. I got one. I do. I have, I have a couple. So Nice. Um, Jorgie, just to get you caught up, uh, speaking with Trevor earlier on the betting side, uh, he made the Mallards a minus 140 favorite. I actually thought it was a little light, but since I drafted the Diamondbacks in our uh, in our draft for the uh, the playoffs, I had to go with the Diamondbacks. Anyway, I guess general thought in terms of who's a favorite, who's an underdog, you, you have to agree with the, that the Mallards would be favored, right? Yeah, um, it's... It'd be tough to bet on as well because just because I mean you saw what the D backs did to the Eagles. Um, you know, they were the three seed, they were five and ten, Eagles were the two seed, ten and five, and they took them down. So I think you definitely still have to favor the Mallards. They're the one seed. They went eleven and four. They got the buy for a reason. Um, I was at this game and once again, these playoffs have been great. You'll I think everyone's gonna enjoy the series as well. And yeah, like like I said, you have to favor the the Mallards coming in this game. All right. Um Obviously, we know the if there was a billboard, it's going to be um, Robles versus um, Norp. In your opinion, who would be the most important non-Norp or Robles player in, yeah, in terms was, of helping the, their team win? I was, I mean, I was going to name two because I was going to say Jimmy and Jordan kind of cancel themselves out. They're probably the best two players in the league right now. Maybe them two and Cratch, I think, are top three. So I think whatever they do are going to kind of cancel each other. They're going to pitch a lot. They're going to hit homers. So I think it's really going to come down to Jonah versus Tommy. Um, Thomas had a great season. He's hit a lot of homers. He's kind of having Jordan on his team has kind of really helped him out with his confidence, I think. And he's kind of just been able to do what he does best, just hit homers in big spots. And Jonah, these last couple of series, especially against the Eagles, both times in the regular season and the playoffs, he's been huge. And, you know, Jimmy's kind of sat back and just did his work on the mound. I think Jonah was a better hitter than him in the Eagle, first Eagle series. And he honestly might've been uh, in that first playoff series too. So I think it's just going to come down to what Tom and Jonah could do. And then obviously little pieces like Caden and Shima can really, you know, if Tom and Jonah end up canceling each other out too, then, you know, Caden and Shima down the end of the line can really help him. Yeah. We've slowly, but surely turned into a um, Michael Shima show here. Uh, Big Shima fans. We've already talked about it earlier with Trevor. Um, I think we asked you the question two series ago. Uh, I don't know how to phrase it so that you give the answer that you want to give, but how about just which pitcher? Okay. Um, just one second. I asked last time who was the better pitcher between uh, uh, Norp and Dallas, yeah. and you said – uh, Dallas, and then I rephrase it as who would you want on the mound if yeah. you had to win the game, and you said Norm. So, yes. uh, uh, just to catch people up, you can yeah. only have one. Who do you want? Okay. Um, honestly, if like 
I think I'll go both on one side. I think the more talented and the guy I'd want is probably Jimmy still. Um, you know, I saw you saw what he did against the Eagles. He really pitched well. You know, they saw off hot, but the way he just can't kind of just calm himself down, you know, they lost the first game, down three nothing in the second game. If you have a guy that can just calm down, let the bats do the work and just shut out the rest of that game and then shut out the third game. That's the guy I want. Um, you know, Jordan has a whole bunch of with ball experience. He's been doing that for a while. Uh, this, this method is a little new to him. He's really, he's still doing perfectly fine with it. Like he's still a ace and a really good pitcher, but I think that if Jordan gets that spot where Jimmy was uh, last series against the Eagles, I, I don't think Jordan honestly would have been able to hand it the same way. Handle it the same way. Nothing against him, but you know, I I don't know if anyone could have done that like Jimmy did. So, take Jim. Uh, yeah, we've been pretty blessed with a pretty good series. Uh, any comments uh, you want to make before we get into some NFL betting? Anything you want to say about the series we just watched between the Cobras and the Predators? Any thoughts? Yeah, uh, going going into that series, I wasn't at that one, but I remember texting like Cratch, like when when do you guys play the Cobras? And he like text me oh we played them like today we lost and I was I was shocked after I, I mean I didn't see it at that point but you know everyone was telling me pretty much exactly what happened that Preds Wildcat series and the way the crash was hitting the end of the season in that series I just thought Preds are going to be in the World Series which is kind of uh, not respecting what the Cobras have done this year and obviously so because that was an awesome series. Uh, I think Kyle did a good job editing that video, making it intense with that whole second inning, bases loaded situation, and then them coming back. So, uh, you know, I think there's a, this Mallard Z back series, you know, a great one. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's gonna top that one, but yeah, that we'll, we'll see. Depends, honestly. Sometimes when you see the video, the play in person, and then you go watch the video and see what Kyle does with it, does with it, that kind of weighs heavily on what I think about, like the intensity of the video all right uh on the record uh do you agree questionable if the uh cobras deserved it oh because warda said that <laughs> yeah when i i saw that i texted warda i was like questionable deserve it dang and he was just like yeah i was just being like a little bitch then like i was just i was just <laughs> and they i think uh drew said something about it on pipe it up about how Warda was just like texting the next day and hoping they would win. But yeah, no, they deserve it for sure. They got the one seed. They beat out the Wildcats and the Preds in the AL. And those are, or in that, yeah, in the AL. And those are fantastic teams. And then they took down the hot scorching Preds. So yeah, they definitely deserve it. All right. Uh, uh, shameless self promotion. In addition to him talking about it on Pipe It Up, he also talked about it on Fade the Mahoney when he joined. Uh, Sean Flynn and the Red Baron, uh, and we talked yeah. about it then as well. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say about MLW before well, we get into some NFL? Let's do some NFL. Why not? All right. Uh, this guy right here has given us six straight weeks of picks. One of them has been graded a loser. The other five are winners. No one's hotter. It's not really the point of the show. We're supposed to give losers here, but uh, – what do you what do you say about that? Fade the Mahoney. Yeah, I, yeah, I said the the show is fade the Mahoney. The segment we do is ride the Georgie. All right, ride the Georgie. What do we got? What's your lock of the week? Yeah, so honestly, looking through this week, I thought it was really tough. Um, you know, there's six teams on by. There's less games, so less options to pick from, and there's a lot of like really heavy favorites. There's like a 14 point favorite and a couple 12 and a half. And I don't know if I'm ever down to pick either side of those because you don't know how it's gonna go how the better team shows up, what kind of garbage time you get. So when picking mine this week, I just kind of uh, dwindled it down to there was a team that I thought should have been favored that wasn't. So I think I'm going to take that team. And that was Seattle on the road. I, you know, well, I might as well stick with the team on the road. It's going to work in. But they aren't favorites this time. They are underdogs. They're uh, two-point underdogs against the Cardinals. And, you know, the Cardinals have – Last two years have never really played that good at home. Um, I think they are playing better, but Seattle's just t took down the Giants, who's been playing really good. Um, you know, that offense with Geno Smith, Lockett and Metcalf were questionable if they were, like, healthy or not, and they looked pretty healthy last week. They got another week to get healthy. Uh, Ken Walker looks like a stud, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Seattle because I thought they should have been favored. 
And he's Mike's probably gonna say it's a bad pick because he always does, but you know. I've lost so much money fading you. I'm just exactly. I'm probably just going to keep it quiet right now. Uh, yeah. The scary thing is, um, I agree with that, but I think everybody in the world agrees with that. I don't, That's... you can't, I don't, I agree with you. How are they favored by, how are the Cardinals favored by two? They're terrible at home. Yeah. They don't win football games. Yeah, and the Giants pick I made a couple weeks ago against the Jags where they weren't favored. That was one where I was kind of like, yeah, everyone's probably throwing money on this, but, you know, it ended up working out. Uh, and last week, everybody had the Titans. It's, I don't, I, I don't yeah. understand how you're doing what you're doing, Georgie, but. I mean, I'm just, I'm just taking, taking what I like. You know, I, I sit down and watch nine hours of football every Sunday, so I just kind of watch the team, see how they perform. I'm like, that team's good, that team's bad. You know, I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of this lock just because I didn't like a lot of the options. But, you know, this is this is probably the one I was most confident about. All right. Um, in case you don't go back and watch the show, uh, both Trevor and I have lost many in a row. And Trevor went against uh, what he always does, which is he takes home domes who are getting points. And so he swapped it this week. He's actually laying the points with the Packers against but, yeah all, all that one was in consideration because you know i'm a Lions fan uh don't like the lines but it's weird when lines play at home their offense like explodes when they're on the road they don't and i don't know if like and when they've been playing at home they've been playing against offenses that can keep up so i don't quite i'm not quite that confident that the packers can keep up but then again the Lions defense is awful i just didn't i don't want to touch that one all right but i, I like that pick for trevor Ooh, I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. All right. That's the uh, newly named uh, Ride with Jorgie. Is that what we're calling it? Ride with Jorgie segment? Ride with Jorgie. Or it Ride is... the Jorgie. Pay the Mahoney, Ride the Jorgie. All right. All right. That makes more sense. All right. Uh, that'll finish up that. And we're going to flow right into the finish up uh, our NFL segment with the e -donk. So, Jorgie, mm -hmm. thanks again. Uh, mustache is looking tight. Really like it. Congratulations on that. And, uh, Thank you for subbing in for your buddy, Chadwick. Who... All right, uh, we're back to finish up the uh, NFL talk uh, for the episode. Uh, Edonk, if you're going to keep winning, there's going to be some changes made around here. Three in a row, buddy. I don't know what you're doing, but you got three in a row. So people are going to have to start, stop fading you if you're going to be this sharp. Uh, quick quick recap i just got to pull it up here uh <clears throat> you won with the vikings last week uh easily. I, right what were you saying easily easily yep uh i lost with the falcons uh if it wasn't for the hail mary at the end of the game i would have won but that'll happen and trevor had the lions who he was only getting three and a half points and they lost by four, and they were also up by a million. So some unluckiness, uh, but you have won. Uh, uh, I took uh, I took Miami for a gazillion yeah. and uh, got lucky to chop, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so in your last four picks, Edonk, you are 3-0-1. Oh, you are leading the way at 4-3-1. Trevor's 3-5. and five. I'm 2-6. and six. Uh, we'll talk about Lucas in a second, but uh, you're going to go last because uh, you have to uh, suffer. Um, Hopefully no one has my. Uh, uh, Trevor took Green Bay minus four. And Gee, awful. And uh, I'm just going to take one of those that you want to throw up in your mouth when you take it, but I am going to do it. <clears throat> I'm going to take the Washington Commanders plus three and a half yep. <laughs> at home against the Vikings. That's my pick. What do you got? I'm taking the Falcons. Uh, I'm taking the Falcons plus uh, three, I think three, three, three and, and a half. half. You get three and a half at home against the Chargers. Yeah, the Chargers are a little fluky. Um, the uh, Falcons have shown uh, signs of uh, – being a maybe a playoff team maybe 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 
maybe, but they, they've shown signs of uh, being better than uh, average. And I think the Chargers are very, very average. All right. So to recap, you and I are doing like the smart, sharp thing. We're taking home underdogs. And Trevor is going against every fiber of his being and taking a road favorite in the Packers. So uh, that, that's the mainstays here. Um, Lucas came out of nowhere and won a game last week. He had the Eagles laying a bazillion points. They won by more than that. So he's up to two and six. Lucas and I, we both have the same record at two and six. So uh, you got to tell the people, what is his lock of the week? Believe it or not, he's laying the points um, again, and he's taking the uh, Bills. Um, Ooh, minus 12. 12 and a half on the road at the Jets. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a Lucas pick right there. That is for sure. Uh, I expected uh, nothing less. 12 and a half on the road. All yeah. right. Um, all right, let's finish off. Uh, let's finish off the episode with the uh, dad joke of the week. I was just reading online that uh, this is a good one, so let's have it. So I went to uh, I went to the zoo, and uh, there was only there was only one animal at the zoo, and it was a dog. It's kind of a shit zoo. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty good. I don't even have to bleep that to keep in compliance yeah. with uh, YouTube. So, all right. It's a, sh it's a shit suit. All right. Uh, good gambling, everybody.